One of the sad signs of our times is that we have demonized those who produce, subsidized those who refuse to produce, and canonized those who complain. Since this is an era when many people are concerned about fairness and social justice, what is your fair share of what someone else has worked for? Despite a voluminous and often fervent literature on income distribution, the cold fact is that most income is not distributed, it is earned. Competition does a much more effective job than government at protecting consumers. The welfare state is the oldest con game in the world. First, you take people's money away, quietly, and then you give some of it back to them, flamboyantly. I have never understood why it is greed to want to keep the money you have earned, but not greed to want to take somebody else's money. The fact that the market is not doing what we wish it would do is no reason to automatically assume that the government would do better. Bailing out people who made ill-advised mortgages makes no more sense than bailing out people who lost their life savings in Las Vegas casinos. When you want to help people, you tell them the truth. When you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. When people get used to preferential treatment, equal treatment seems like discrimination. Can you cite one speck of hard evidence? of the benefits of diversity that we have heard gushed about for years. Evidence of its harm can be seen, written in blood, from Iraq to India, from Serbia to Sudan, from Fiji to the Philippines. It is scary how easily so many people can be brainwashed by sheer repetition of a word. Much of the social history of the Western world over the past three decades has involved replacing what worked with what sounded good. Intellect is not wisdom. Some of the biggest cases of mistaken identity are among intellectuals who have trouble remembering that they are not God. The problem isn't that Johnny can't read. The problem isn't even that Johnny can't think. The problem is that Johnny doesn't know what thinking is he confuses it with feeling. It takes considerable knowledge just to realize the extent of your own ignorance. Ronald Reagan had a vision of America. Barack Obama has a vision of Barack Obama. A society that puts equality, in the sense of equality of outcome, a head of freedom will end up with neither equality nor freedom. The use of force to achieve equality will destroy freedom, and the force introduced for good purposes will end up in the hands of people who use it to promote their own interests. If you are not prepared to use force to defend civilization, then be prepared to accept barbarism. One of the consequences of such notions as entitlements is that people who have contributed nothing to society feel that society owes them something, apparently just for being nice enough to grace us with their presence. The most basic question is not what is best, but who shall decide what is best. Socialism, in general, has a record of failure so blatant that only an intellectual could ignore or evade it. If you have always believed that everyone should play by the same rules and be judged by the same standards, that would have gotten you labeled a radical 50 years ago, a liberal 25 years ago, and a racist today. We seem to be getting closer and closer to a situation where nobody is responsible for what they did, but we are all responsible for what somebody else did. What is ominous is the ease with which some people go from saying that they don't like something to saying that the government should forbid it. When you go down that road, don't expect freedom to survive very long. 
The only way anyone can have a right to something that has to be produced is to force someone else to produce it for him. The more things are provided as rights, the less the recipients have to work and the more others have to carry their load. It takes no more research than a trip to almost any public library or college to show the incredibly lopsided coverage of slavery in the United States or in the Western Hemisphere as compared to the meager writings on an even larger number of Africans enslaved in the Islamic countries of the Middle East and North Africa, not to mention the vast number of Europeans also enslaved in the centuries past in the Islamic world and within Europe itself. At least a million Europeans were enslaved by North African pirates alone from 1500 to 1800, and some European slaves were still being sold on the auction blocks in Egypt years after the Emancipation Proclamation freed the blacks in the United States. Freedom has caused too much blood and agony to be relinquished at the cheap price of rhetoric. Racism does not have a good track record. It's been tried out for a long time, and you would think, by now, we'd want to put an end to it instead of putting it under new management. You cannot take any people of any color and exempt them from the requirements of civilization, including work, behavioral standards, personal responsibility, and all other basic things that the clever intelligentsia disdain without ruinous consequences to them and to society at large. No one chooses which culture to be born into, or can be blamed for how that culture evolved in the past centuries. Ours may become the first civilization destroyed, not by the power of our enemies, but by the ignorance of our teachers and the dangerous nonsense they are teaching our children. In an age of artificial intelligence, they are creating artificial stupidity. There have always been ignorant people, but they haven't always had college degrees to make them unaware of their ignorance. Some people imagine that they are well informed because they have memorized a whole galaxy of trendy dogmas and fashionable attitudes. What is called an educated person is often someone who has had a dangerously superficial exposure to a wide spectrum of subjects. Various mental tests or scholastic tests have been criticized as unfair because different groups perform very differently on such tests. But one reply to critics summarized the issue succinctly. The tests are not unfair, life is unfair, and the tests measure the results. People are all born ignorant, but they are not born stupid. Much of the stupidity we see today is introduced by our educational system from the elementary schools to the universities. In a high-tech age that has seen the creation of artificial intelligence by computers, we are also seeing the creation of artificial stupidity by people who call themselves educators. One of the first things taught in introductory statistics textbooks is that correlation is not causation. It is also one of the first things forgotten. The fact that so many successful politicians are such shameless liars is not only a reflection of them, it is also a reflection on us. When the people want the impossible, only liars can satisfy. If you have been voting for politicians who promise to give you goodies at someone else's expense, then you have no right to complain when they take your money and give it to someone else, including themselves. It's hard to imagine a more stupid or more dangerous way of making decisions than by putting those decisions in the hands of people who pay no price for being wrong. No one will really understand politics until they understand that politicians are not trying to solve our problems. They are trying to solve their own problems, of which getting elected and re-elected are number one and number two. Whatever is number three is far behind. People who enjoy meetings should not be in charge of anything. No matter how much people on the left talk about compassion, they have no compassion for the taxpayers. 
Many of the political left are so entranced by the beauty of their vision that they cannot see the ugly reality they are creating in the real world. Despite whatever the left may say, or even believe, about their concern for the poor, their actual behavior shows their interest in the poor to be greatest when the poor can be used as a focus for the left's denunciation of society. The fatal attraction of government is that it allows busybodies to impose decisions on others without paying any price themselves. That enables them to act as if there were no price, even when there are ruinous prices paid by others. Mystical references to society and its programs may help warm the hearts of the gullible, but what it really means is putting more power in the hands of bureaucrats. Weighing benefits against costs is the way most people make decisions, and the way most businesses make decisions if they want to stay in business. Only in government is any benefit, however small, considered to be worth any cost, however large. It was Thomas Edison who brought us electricity, not the Sierra Club. It was the Wright brothers who got us off the ground, not the Federal Aviation Administration. It was Henry Ford who ended the isolation of millions of Americans by making the automobile affordable, not Ralph Nader. Those who have helped the poor the most have not been those who have gone around loudly expressing compassion for the poor, but those who found ways to make industry more productive and distribution more efficient, so that the poor of today can afford things that the affluent of yesterday could only dream about. Envy was once considered to be one of the seven deadly sins before it became one of the most admired virtues under its new name, social justice. The media are less a window on reality than a stage on which officials and journalists perform self-scripted, self-serving fictions. Some things are believed because they are demonstrably true, but many other things are believed simply because they have been asserted repeatedly and repetition has been accepted as a substitute for evidence. Slippery use of the word privilege is part of a vogue of calling achievements privileges, a vogue which extends far beyond educational issues, spreading a toxic confusion in many other aspects of life. I am so old that I can remember when other people's achievements were considered to be an inspiration rather than a grievance. The concept of microaggression is just one of many tactics used to stifle differences of opinion by declaring some opinions to be hate speech instead of debating those differences in a marketplace of ideas. To accuse people of aggression for not marching in lockstep with political correctness is to set the stage for justifying real aggression against them. As an entrepreneur in India put it, Indians have learned from painful experience that the state does not work on behalf of the people. More often than not, it works on behalf of itself. Among the many other questions raised by the nebulous concept of greed is why it is a term applied almost exclusively to those who want to earn more money or to keep what they have already earned, never to those wanting to take other people's money in taxes or to those wishing to live on the largesse dispensed from such taxation. No amount of taxation is ever described as greed on the part of the government or the clientele of the government. If people in the media cannot decide whether they are in the business of reporting news or manufacturing propaganda, it is all the more important that the public understand that difference and choose their news sources accordingly. Whatever we wish to achieve in the future, it must begin by knowing where we are in the present, not where we wish we were, or where we wish others to think we are, but where we are in fact. Where beliefs are not checked against facts, but instead facts must meet the test of consonance with the prevailing vision, we are in the process of sealing ourselves off from feedback from reality. Heedless of the past, we are flying blind into the future. 
When people are presented with the alternatives of hating themselves for their failure or hating others for their success, they seldom choose to hate themselves. The reason so many people misunderstand so many issues is not that these issues are so complex, but that people do not want a factual or analytical explanation that leaves them emotionally unsatisfied. What all these lofty vague phrases boil down to is that the court can impose things that the voters don't want and the constitution does not require, but which are in vogue in circles to which the court responds. Justice at all cost is not justice.